What's up YouTube, it's Daniel and today I wanted to go over a sort of makeshift list here that I made for you guys and basically it's been a while since I've done an FBA video and I kind of just wanted to go over everything that I've learned so far and compress it into a video for you guys to you know use for product research and kind of some tips and tricks that I have learned from from different th mistakes that I made and hopefully this list will be like beneficial to you guys when you're you know looking for new products or trying to launch a new product and they're just really good things to keep in mind and I'm currently just looking for products right now so I don't really have an official update other than I'm looking for a product but you know I still want to make FBA content for you guys so without further ado let's just dive into this list and I We'll probably post like a PDF file or maybe just post the list in, in the uh, description. So if you guys don't want to sit through the entire video and just want to see you know, the basic terms, you can look down there. But anyways, let's start off the list. So the first thing that I have on my list for how to not fail at Amazon when you're launching a new product is make sure you have market differentiation. So a lot of times, you know, you might see really good numbers and you know the sales are good the reviews are good you know everything's lining up but then you you know go to your broadest keyword that you're trying to rank for and every single thing is the same so I know one product that was really uh, really fell into this category and had issues were those four sided like rulers they were like a you know like a square thing and you could like move it around to make to different angles or whatever and they're all just like this yellow ruler thing and I know a lot of people that you know, saw the numbers, dove into that, and then regretted it because basically the price will just fall. And then it's just whoever's offering the lowest price because no one else is offering anything more of value than, you know, that one item. So that's a big thing. Make sure you can kind of differentiate yourself or make sure there's lots of other options. Like, you know, there's lots of different things on the top listing, like, you know, different colors or different packages or whatever it is and make sure it's not all just the exact same item because you might fall into that race of who can just offer the lowest price and you don't want to be there because you're going to lose profit, you could lose money, and it's just not a good place to be. The next thing I have on here is think about the shipping process. So I kind of got burned with this with my magnets and basically I just didn't think of how the magnetism would affect the shipping process and I got my magnets shipped to me in like very little and I got my magnet shipped to me in thin boxes and this caused them to basically you know stick together and all the boxes would clump together and it would just you know ruin the boxes and they'd be hard to ship and the magnetism would like go through the USPS package and probably stick to things in the UPS or the USPS truck or whatever and I ordered a couple other people's to see how they were shipping them and they basically had you know like a tube thing over the pack of magnets to protect the magnetism so it couldn't like attach to anything and basically what I'm trying to say is that sh the shipping process for Amazon to fulfill your order you know you want to just think about your product you want to think about the packaging think about possible problems that could occur because you know if you're ordering uh, you know the minimum order quantity that you need which is another thing on my list I recommend like 300 or so but anyways if you're ordering that many units, you don't want it to, you know, just basically fail because of poor planning on the shipping part. So, you know, most products might just be basic things like a toy or, you know, whatever, a home and garden or whatever the heck it is. So you might not have that issue, but if you have an obscure object and, you know, might run into some trouble shipping it, just make sure that you really think about the process or you know you go on to another person's product and you order it and see how they're shipped to you so you know that when you're ordering them you get the best you have the best chance of succeeding because you know your product will be able to be fulfilled and won't have any issues with Amazon so next on my list I have factor in all expenses so this is a big one and I know everybody's just like you know you buy your product and you buy the course and that's it but there's a lot that goes into it, you know, kind of nitpicky things like in the works type of things that you really don't see until you're actually 
starting to launch your product and trying to grow. And some of those things are like ads. So if you do any Facebook ads or outside advertising like I did because Amazon wasn't working or Amazon pay-per-click advertising, you know, I know you get your first $50 free, but $50 goes really fast and, you know, you need to factor in your cost for that. And I know you can uh, set your Amazon pay-per-click to basically be taken out of your bi-weekly pay, which is what I recommend you do. But, you know, you still got to factor that in because that's money that you're spending. Also, giveaways or verified reviews. You know, if you want to boost your rank really quick at the beginning and give away tons of products for, like, a cheaper price or, you know, get a bunch of uh, verified reviews from the group and just pay them back. So you're basically just giving them an item for free in exchange for the review. This costs you money and, you know, you should factor it in just to make sure that you're not screwing yourself over for making a profit and then also just an item for yourself so you want to have an item for yourself in case you have any you know hardcore hijackers that you need to have a picture of your item for to send to Amazon and last but not least photos so you want to have really good high quality professional images of your products you know five to I think seven images and you don't want to slack there at all. It's super, super important. And my images, I basically just took images and had a Photoshop editor, you know, make it with a white background. And I think it was about $50, $70 an image, or not an image, sorry, for a product. So I get about five images. So, you know, it was like $10 an image or so. And that's probably a pretty common rate. You can do it on Fiverr, which is what I did, or you can have a professional person take photos that you know. But either way, it's a cost, you know, maybe up to 100 bucks that you need to factor into your, you know, cost of launching your product. Another thing I have is ordering enough units. So I only ordered 100 units of both of my items, and partially because my items were kind of expensive to make. They were about, my first one, the magnets, were about $8 a pack, and then my next product was about ten dollars and thirty six cents for one unit and that's to ship and to uh, manufacture so you know that's pretty expensive and if you're doing three hundred units of those you know it's gonna be like three thousand dollars and you know the kind of goal for having money to spend on this course and on your product is always said to be about fifteen hundred bucks so if that's the case, you got to find products that are worth like two bucks, and typically the shipping from your manufacturer will be about the same price per unit as it is to make the unit. So you know, in my case, it was five dollars to make, five dollars ship, ten dollars. So if you can find a product that's about two bucks, three bucks, you know, it'll be a little bit cheaper for you, and you can get more units. But I highly, highly suggest you get enough units get at least 250 I recommend probably like 300 because if your product goes well you are you will run out very fast and if you run out fast you will drop rank and have to restart all over again and you know you can still make it back up the rank but it's just very risky and you did all this work to finally get up to page one or two so you know, why not protect your investment a little bit by waiting a little bit longer and saving up some more money so you can either buy that 300 inventory or you can find a product where you can afford the 300 inventory. So hopefully that made sense, but 300 inventory is a good like goal to aim for. And obviously this could change if your sales volume isn't super high, but you know, you just don't want to run out very fast and you want to give yourself about a month and a half. I found it for me it was about five, six weeks to from the time I ordered my products to get them into the warehouse. So, you know, five or six weeks, even, you know, seven, eight weeks to be safe, you want to have to order more inventory. So just be very careful and take this one, you know, very seriously. You don't want to run out of inventory. That is very bad. So another thing I wrote is competition. And I had a problem with this one. So you know, I was scrolling through and I was like, oh, you know, this looks like a good product. The sales are insane. And, you know, the sales kind of sway you a little bit to be like, you know, oh, I could, you know, spend some more on pay-per-click and probably outrank these, you know, top page ranks. But, you know, it's, it's probably not going to happen. And, 
you just got to be real with yourself. You know, if you see a page that's got a couple hundred reviews, a couple 80 reviews, and then the other ones are like about 50, that's pretty competitive, at least from my point of view. And, you know, you just, you just want to be real. Stick to a guideline, you know, Tanner says about 50 reviews, 75 reviews, somewhere in there should be like the max, you know, if, unless there's just one pay, one product on there that has about like 100 or so. But if there's multiple that have 100 or there's 300 or 400, and then there's a bunch of other low rank, you know, 30 reviews, two reviews, don't be swayed by just a few of them with low reviews. You want all of them or the majority of them, about, you know, 80, 70, 80% of them should have under 50 reviews and that is really a key, key factor, and I know it's, you know, taught in the course, but that's one thing that I struggled with with my second product, and I'm sure, you know, some of you have struggled with too, where you see, you know, some people up there with low reviews, and you're like, oh, well, you know, I can outrank them because I know all this stuff, but in the reality, you know, I don't know how they got up there, but they either gave away tons of stuff, or they had something else going on, or they're getting sales outside of Amazon, but... You don't want to take that risk. You want to make sure that you're just going to dominate the market. You want to have it be very low. You don't want it to be very established. You want it to just be easy to take over. And last but not least, I have spent some extra time researching to make sure you have a good product and don't rush like I did on my second one. And obviously this is kind of common sense, but... It is true, and I think a lot of people just, you know, I was feeling very pressured. I was like, this is going to, you know, end soon, or this is going to become too saturated soon. And, you know, the, the reality is that Amazon's growing very fast. There's lots of products. There's tons of things to do and search for. And you got to just, you know, take your time and be methodical about it. You can't just be, you know, gun ho and emotional. You got to just think about your decisions, make sure, like, double check your work 10 times, ask people for advice, you know, show your work to other people. So show your findings. You know, there are tons of successful people in the group. So if you have a product that you might be looking into, you know, show it to other people. You can show it to me if you want. I think I have a pretty good understanding of the numbers now after, you know, kind of averagely launching two products and, you know, you just got to make sure that you're really, really, really sure of your product and put in the time, you know, spend money to consult with Tanner, whatever you got to do to make sure that you have a winner or that you've done everything you can to, you know, ensure your success with your product. And if you have a bad product, you know, this happens to all of us. It happened to me twice. I do have a video where I explain how to, you know, push more sales out when you can't rank for Amazon or you don't have any Amazon pay-per-click advertising because none of the keywords are working very well. So if you want to watch that video, I will link it in the description. But thanks for watching. I hope you got some value out of this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I'll be happy to help you. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.